Hey there YouTubers, it's Don from True Cable coming back at you again. This time we're talking about coaxial cable, uh, something we haven't talked about before. Yes, True Cable has done it. We have introduced coax. It's going to be offered in 500 and 1000 foot varieties. In fact, we already have our riser rated in stock in 500 and 1000 feet and it comes in quad and dual shield. Uh, today, we'll uh, talk about the dual shield, and basically, uh, the dual. this is the white version. Uh, it comes in black and white. Uh, the dual shield is the uh, easy-to-work-with version of coaxial. It, is, it has a solid center, uh, solid copper center conductor, so it's suitable for satellite and many other applications which require any kind of voltage across that uh, center conductor. Um, it has a braid shield, of course, and a foil shield being dual shielded. And it's the perfect cable um, if you don't have a high EMI RFI environment. In other words, uh, if you're running it uh, and you can maintain an 8 inch separation uh, from 120 or 240 volt AC, then treat it just like you would unshielded uh, Ethernet cable. Uh, basically, you can think of dual shield uh, coax as the equivalent of unshielded Ethernet in regards to EMI immunity. But we're not talking about Ethernet. Uh, we are talking about coax. So this stuff's useful for broadband, cable modems, cable TV. Um, people have been using it to go to cameras, and some people even hook up over-the-air high-density uh, uh, TV. Now, uh, for the saddle, or I should say for the signal applications from a antenna that's not powered, uh, you're probably better off to go with the quad shield uh, due to the fact that it's a little lower loss and you want as much immunity and loss or and little loss as possible uh, when dealing with that. But for broadband, uh, cable modems, cable TV, stuff like that, this stuff's a great choice, especially for an environment that isn't uh, just loaded up with a bunch of uh, interference. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to get into cutting this open. I'm going to show you how to strip it, and then I'm going to show you, and I'm going to give you a sneak peek. Um, we're going to talk about, okay, just don't tell my boss. We're going to talk about our new F connectors. It turns out I have a few actual production samples. We just haven't gotten them all manufactured and packaged up yet, but I'm going to show you a few. Just everybody, this is on the low. Nobody say anything to my boss about it, and I might even show you the uh termination tool that we've got as well. So stay tuned. I'm going to be right back and we're going to get into this cable. Okay, so we've got our dual shield uh, riser rated RG6 cable here and we're going to get into this cable and show you how it goes. Now a tool that we've had around for quite some time is actually an extremely useful tool for this cable uh, for either the double or the quad shield. Uh, coaxial, and that is our true cable cut and strip tool. We were thinking ahead and we got something that works very well, not only for cutting and stripping Ethernet, but also works really well for the uh, RG6 uh, quad and double shield cabling. Um, you're probably familiar with using the cutter on this guy, and hey, it works just fine with coaxial too. See? Nice clean cut. On the front of it, you've got this cassette, uh, which is reversible for RG59 or 6 or RG7 or 11. And so I've got it set for 59 and 6. And the way you strip this cable, it's quite simple. Uh, what you do is you put the cable through and you put it right up to the green right here. If you can see that, basically it stops right at the end of the green. And then you start turning it so that you start cutting through that braid shield for the first level uh, cut because that's going to be a quarter inch, quarter inch, or total one half inch prep. And you'll actually hear it grinding through that braid or feel it. Okay, now it's already ground through that first level braid. Now it's going to start cutting, it's going to stop making noise, but it's going to start cutting into the cable jacket. And then as soon as you start feeling it cutting into that second or the, or the braid again, that's when you stop because you don't want to take off your braid uh, for the further for the further backstrip part. Right there. Okay. So that's the first level strip, quarter inch. And then you got your second level strip. Hey, and it's a successful strip because all you're dealing with here now is a little bitty piece of plastic. All the braid is still here. Now, if you end up with a bunch of little pieces of metal down here, that being the braid shield, you cut too much off and you need to cut this off and start again. 
So now uh, we'll show you another little useful thing on this tool that you may not have, you may have wondered what this was for. This is a, uh, a hook. It's part of a hook and loop system, but it's an essentially a piece of uh, a hook material that's been glued to the bottom of the tool. And that is to comb this braid shield backwards without poking your fingers or otherwise causing a problem. And it also makes it nice and even. So you just comb it back, kind of like you're combing your hair. Uh, well, maybe not quite like combing your hair unless your hair is made out of wire braid, but hey, you get the idea. And the, the goal is to end up with no more wire braid up here on the foil. It should all be back uh, along the cable jacket, and that's exactly how you prop it up. And so if you see any little errant pieces on there, get them off there, get them folded back down. Sometimes you have to take a good close look at it. But the idea being that you got your foil, you got your solid copper conductor, you've got your braid shield that's been combed backwards. Now we can put on, and remember I said don't, don't tell anybody, but I'm going to show you our new compression F connector. It's not for sale yet. It is a universally compatible one, quad shield, double shield. Really doesn't matter how thick the cable is. Uh, it's extremely easy to get onto the cable, and it is a compression style connector. So we'll go ahead and just simply put the cable in and push it up. There we go. And it stopped right at the point where that white dielectric is flush with the bottom of the inside of the uh, of this mechanism here. So the white dielectric should be either flush or below, uh, just slightly below, and your copper conductor should not come more than perhaps uh, a quarter, an eighth of an inch past this uh, metal. Otherwise, you could cause damage to the device you're screwing it into. So that that's as about as much copper coming out of there as you want to see. And then once it's at that point, um, then, and I'm going to give you a little sneak peek again. I'm not going to talk too much about this, but this is our new compression tool, but it's not for sale yet. I'm going to put it in here. There we go. A perfectly done compression connector, and uh, it's not going to be coming off easily, or you, I mean, you really have to get a wrench on there and yank it off in order to get it off. So that's on there really well, and it's ready to screw into something. So that is um, our double shield uh, coaxial cable. I hope you enjoyed the video. If uh, you did, give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you uh, couldn't stand it, uh, or you know, please subscribe to our channel, uh, leave a comment below, and uh, we love responding to those. And you have a great day and happy networking.